the other animals humans eat, use in science, hunt, trap, and exploit in a variety of other ways, have a life of their own that is of importance to them apart from their utility to us. They are not only in the world, they are aware of it and also of what happens to them. And what happens to them matters to them. Each and in some ways it really is that simple. The position we hold, the abolitionist position, often is said to be extreme. And those of us who hold it are said to be extremists. And the unspoken suggestions are that extreme positions cannot be right and an extremist must be wrong. But I am an extremist. When it comes to rape, I'm against it all the time. I am an extremist when it comes to child abuse. I'm against it all the time. I am an extremist when it comes to sexual discrimination, racial discrimination. I am against it all the time. I am against the abuse of the elderly all the time. The main fact is, moral truth often is extreme and must be for when the injustice to the world like us, they are some bodies, not some things. In these the important idea for the purposes of the animal rights movement is the idea of what philosophers call a negative right. This is a right of non-interference, non-invasion, non-harm. And what the animal rights people are really trying to do, what we're trying to say is that the arguments are in place, they're there, they're compelling, they're persuasive that make the case that these rights extend to other animals. And we will not be satisfied until we've gotten every animal out of every cage. The philosophy of animal rights demands only that logic be respected for any argument that plausibly explains the independent value of human beings implies that other animals have the same value and have it equally. And any argument that plausibly explains the right of humans to be treated with respect also implies that these other animals have this same right and have it equally also. The idea of humane slaughter is like an oxymoron to me. It's like military intelligence, you know. I mean, you, the, 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 the two ideas don't go together very well. But even if there was, by some wild invention, some way of killing animals without causing them pain, still wouldn't justify killing them. When we find out where the truth lies, we find out who lies. The truth as it happens is quite the reverse. The philosophy of animal rights is on the side of reason. It is pro, not anti-science. Stands for, not against justice. Stands for peace and against violence. The fundamental demand of this philosophy is to treat humans and other animals with respect. This philosophy, therefore, is a philosophy of peace. But it is a philosophy that extends the demand for peace beyond the boundaries of our species. The basic philosophy of the animal rights movement is learn, baby, learn, not burn, baby, burn. We are not to violate the rights of the few so that the many might benefit. They had a life story. They were a somebody in the world rather than a something in the world. And their story was unfolding. And we terminated it, we ended it, we, we, we killed them before their time, before the fullness of their life. With regard to the philosophy of animal rights then, is it rational, impartial, scientifically informed? Does it stand for peace and against injustice? To these, all these questions, the answer is an unqualified yes. We will not rest, we will not rest until every animal is out of shall do this, the day will come when all the cages will be empty, when all the animals will be liberated, when all decent, compassionate people can shout with joy.